Hello everyone, this is Robin Short with the Worley Training Department. We've got a good video for you today on tile roof, wind damage, and analysis. So we have um, we've thought about uh, deployment. Uh, we've got hurricane season coming on us. If you're from the north and going south, you may not have seen a lot of tile roofs. So this might help you if uh, this might be a refresher for those of you who have uh, worked some uh, wind damage on tile roofs in the past. So we hope this helps. Uh, we took a lot of this information from Donut Engineering, so we've got some good facts for you. Um, I've got a couple of things to show you. Um, a claim I did back in 2007. Uh, it's uh, it's a good example, I think, of, of a common wind damage roof. I've uh, I lived in South Florida for 10 years, probably climbed on about 2,000 different tile roofs, so got some good examples to show you here. I'll show you an estimate at the end. Yeah, uh, this video will be about 40 minutes long so it's a little lengthy but you can pause it write down some information go back and refer to it hope you enjoy it let's get to work thanks for joining us so let me show you a few things here on this let me get the slide presentation going on pull this up so tile roofs okay tile roofs <clears throat> History of tile. Yeah, it goes back about 10,000 years. China, the modern day Middle East, uh, the settlers brought this technique over in about 1650 and set up a full scale operation in the Hudson Valley River. Again, tile is made from clay, it is baked in kiln and shaped in the form of tiles. Been around a long time. A couple of different types of tile. So we got the S type. Uh, this is one tile in an S form. This is a French style, kind of a W pan type. Don't see a lot of these. And the classic barrel style tile. So this is one tile in the inner lock. We've got tile profiles. We've got a double S, so you can see the double S, very common. Uh, we've got the single S or a Hispana S tile. That's also a very common tile. And of course the flat tile. Mostly concrete tiles are flat. The double S Concrete. Uh, concrete tile was first developed in Germany around 1848. It's a cast in a mold. Uh, they're less brittle than clay, they're more cost effective, and they have a higher hail resistance. Uh, ironically, asbestos and burlap shingles were patented around the same time, about 1851. And so the concrete tile and the shingle tiles all kind of developed around 1850s. So we have this S tile. We've got the flat concrete tile here. There's two types of uh, classification, three kinds of classifications. We have a flat profile, flat tiles are flat. And then we have a low profile, which is a, a raised to the width of ratios about 1.5 or less. So this is a low profile. The raise is 1.5. Uh, inches high then we've got the high profile and it's it's a higher raise than 1.5 so it's 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 more pronounced uh, higher than 1.5 the way to identify a tile is by thickness and, and edge these are clay tiles so the thickness is thinner and the edge is real smooth you can see the smoothness here so you can see how thin they are and by the way, this is a bird stop, this is on the eaves, and this is a gutter apron. Concrete tiles, same way, thickness. You can see they're much thicker, and then you can see the edge, you can see the concrete in them. They're really rough. Here's the tile glossary. We've got the uh, villa tiles. So we have the, the head of the tile. We've got the nail holes here. You've got the toes, uh, the nose of the tile, or the bottom of the tile, sometimes called the tail, tail or nose. Then you've got the water channel, the interlock channel here. You've got the overlay channel here, and you've got the, uh, the water grooves here. When you flip it over, when you flip this over, you're going to see the head lugs, head lugs. Now the lug lays on top of the batten, and then the nail holes are for the batten. Here's a profile of the head lugs here, the batten lugs. You've got the lugs, uh, you've got the weather checks here, keeps the water from checking up. 
and they interlock. This is the Spanish low profile, flat profile, same way. Flat profile, you'll have a little bit more of a reinforcement rib here on those. This is very important. Every tile is identified. So it has some kind of a stamp to give the identification of the manufacturer on that. And sometimes you will flip a tile over and you won't see the stamp. But uh, there's typically a stamp on each tile to identify the manufacturer. And the insulation of a tile roof is nothing you know it's pretty much the same as a shingle roof you get the you know your your ridge your vents your valleys your flashings your underlayments now we'll talk about this in a second what this underlayment really is the battens here and uh, the rake and eaves here the bird stop usually goes in these these eave tiles here all the way around okay your fasteners there, believe it or not, there are some tiles up there just held in gravity, but most of them you'll see prior to 2006, a mortar patty application. The mortar patty application should be that these tiles are moistened or wet when the mortar patty is applied so that the adhesive transfers from the mortar to the tile. You also have screws and nails. Uh, we have the most common now is foam. So every all the foam insulation, they spray this in, they spray the tile, and they, they adhere it with foam. That's the most common. And you get clips in a high wind or um, seismic areas such as California. So the clip is fastened to the batten and then clipped to the tile. Here's your battens. They're spaced a foot apart. They're applied with an 8D, 8D common nail. Uh, the, we use galvanized or non-corrosive fasteners. We don't use anything but plywood, and it should be a, at least a, an inch thick, 15, 30 seconds, something like that. Plywood, we're not going to use OSB. It doesn't hold the fasteners well. Uh, it's uh, susceptible to moisture. Uh, a mortar patty would never hold on OSB. And now your under limit. So the first thing we do after we put the decking on is we use a 30 pound felt that's applied with plastic caps. On top of that, we're going to use a modified bit, 90 pound, hot mop, uh, something like that. So you've got your under limit and then you got your 90 pound bit. The reason for this is that the tile is not the water barrier this is your water barrier this is actually your roof and the reason that a tile roof would last as long as it do because a tile is actually protecting the modified bitumen uh, we'll talk a little bit more about that here's your valleys so we've got cut valleys with a metal flashing metal pan sometimes you'll see it looking more like this where they actually cut the tile and stuff it with mortar here that's pretty common you'll see it that way here's your flashing uh, basically on the wall tiles you'll see uh, on the walls you'll see the, the, the sheet metal counter flashing over a sheet metal channel pan the channel pan is what looks a little different and the tile comes up to it on the battens and then you get this half cap over the tile and the pan <clears throat> here's another view of it there's your counter flashing Here's your channel band, channel flashing. Uh, here's your tile run here, and then you put this cap on top. Head flashing, you're gonna see a lot of this, and you're saying, is there actually a flashing there? And it's done with this, uh, here's the exterior wall, moisture barrier, and then you'll have um, your, your your field tile rolling into it like that. So it's going to look more like this on that on your wall sheet. And then they put the stucco over top of it, put it all in like that. And here's your rising wall. Now, when I see this, sometimes I'm like, is this really flashed properly? Because we would want to really see this, this channel pan right here, uh, this pan flashing right here against this wall. And I'm not saying it's not there, but uh, I think this is flashed a little differently um, with maybe an L flashing, some counter flashing, maybe some step flashing in here. But you'll see this a lot. You probably won't see that pan, but this is the proper way to do it. Okay, we've got 
<laughs> You'll see this a lot if you're working with PAs. You get a PA come out here and you jump on the roof and he'll use this device called the Testing Application Standard or the TAS test with this device. This is not for storm. This is for this is for new construction. So he'll pop this out. He'll start pulling up these tiles and say, look, they're loose. <clears throat> they didn't. They got wind shuffled. No, this is for new application. It is a test for, and the test is to see if there's a 35 pound static uplift held for five seconds and 97% of the tiles have to pass. True on new construction, but this is not for storm related. So if he pulls that out on you, tell him put it away. Can you walk on them? You sure can. You need to walk on um, where the tile overlaps on top of the tile, not in the water channel and you walk on the tops, you distribute your weight evenly, you transfer your weight between your feet gradually as you walk. So you're kind of walking this way. Uh, you walk on the ball on your foot. You never jump, of course you wouldn't jump on a roof anyway, but, and you make sure you're wearing the soft soled shoes with a good grip. Now keep in mind, these most of these roofs are 312, 412, 5, maybe you'll get into a 612, but they're not steep roofs. So you don't want to walk in the on the water channels. That's where this locks. You don't want to walk here. You want to walk on this side over here. Be careful. Common damage types. You got broken tiles, cracked tiles, falling, displaced, and the famous corner crack. Right corner crack. Right bottom corner crack. Ugh. We'll talk about this. It looks like this. So a lot of PA said this is wind damage. Oh, these these uh, they've shuffled and they've broke. Well, you're only going to find a right bottom corner crack on a concrete flat tile. And what's happening here is this is very common. These right bottom corners of these tiles will break due to expansion and contraction, or the tile was installed too tight. This is what it looks like, and it's very common, and this is not wind damage. And this is why this happens. So the, the bottom right corner breaks because right here you can see this interlock. This is the weakest point of this tile. It's very thin right here, and this just chips off. It just breaks because on the bottom left of the tile is the channel lock. And there's a little knob right here to make the channel. And this actually puts pressure on this top tile, causing this to break. Again, because it's installed too tight or there's heavy expansion and contraction on this roof, but this will break right off. So not storm damage. You'll see these vertical cracks. This could be from shuffling, but chances are this is a stress crack. And you'll see a lot of this, foot traffic. So this has been stepped on in the wrong place, right in the middle of the tile, should never be stepped on in the middle. You wanna step on um, the left side of the tile, not on the right side, that's the weakest point, but on the left side, and it'll just crush it inside. Here's more foot traffic. They step right in the middle of the tile. Again, you wanna step at the top, not in the middle and he stepped at the bottom and broke this one. You can see it's just crushed. Now, when we talk about hail damage, uh, it takes about an inch and a half to break a clay, an uh, inch and a three quarter to break concrete, and it's gonna mo look more like a circular shape where it's kind of like, almost looks like a piece of pie cut. You know, it's just, it's, there's a point of impact and then the brakes go out from it and it, it leaves this crescent size here. Here's more hail damage and you can see when they hit the edges, you know, they're, they're, there's a moon shape here. You know, you can almost see the rounded part here and on the edges here. You can see the moon shape here. Also look for the spatter, you know, to confirm any spatter marks, half moon shapes. This is typical I, uh, identification for hail. Again, Foot traffic, not storm damage. We get into clay pitting and spalling uh, due to freeze and thaw cycles. Uh, moisture absorbs in at the voids of, of, uh, of the clay or the concrete. This is a good pitting here. Moisture got in this, baked, boiled out, 
pitted the tile. Here's some, another pitting here. You can see how that's pitted out. This is spalling. The nail probably corroded, rusted, and popped the tile out. More uh, pitting here. Wind damage. This is what we're looking for. Wind damage to tile roof is characterized by lifted tiles, raised tiles, missing tiles, or otherwise displaced tiles. Looking at this roof, low profile, S tile, uh, clay tile, and you get down here to eaves, and this is where it's most susceptible, and you got a missing tile. Wind damage. Wind damage thresholds. Wind speed versus uplift pressure and miles per hour versus per square foot, pounds per square foot. So the uplift pressure depends on basic wind speeds, the height above the ground, the exposure category, the perimeter of the, of the roof, the field tiles, the corner zones, etc. ridge caps. Wind failure depends on attachment methods. Was it applied by foam, nails, mortar, mortar patty? Quality of the installation, you know, if, do we see inconsistencies here? Do we see, uh, what do we see as far as the quality of the installation? Specific tile characteristics, so maybe clay tile will break easier than concrete tile. Um, so what, what type of, what, what manufactured tile are we working with? Some break easier, some are susceptible to win more than others. Now here we go. So we have a two-story, uh, and we can see the, the tiles missing from the hip up on, the, on the high. So again, second story versus ground, we could be 15, 20 degree mile per hour higher at the top elevation than the, than the bottom elevation. Wind probably came in from this direction. We can see that the that the rake wasn't hit. These field tiles on the first floor wasn't, wasn't too bad, but the second story really caught it. And we can see an impact on the second story window. None here, so we can see the wind pushing this way, breaking these tiles. These tiles probably came over and made impact here. We Just to give you an idea of what you're looking for. Okay, now let's look at this roof. So is, the, is this roof wind damage? Well, first, are the tiles displaced? Are there any missing tiles? Disheveled tiles, cracked tiles, cracked in place tiles, or loose but in place tiles. So we're looking at this roof. Doesn't look too bad. Doesn't see any ridge caps damaged here. Uh, looking around here, and then all of a sudden we kind of get down here and see something moving around here. So let's go to the ridge, and we look at that, and we say, oh, is this, is this damage? Probably not. Uh, this is probably failure of the mortar and it looks like they've had some repairs in here at some point um, they, they, they dob some more mortar on there trying to seal that cap but if this was wind damage that piece would probably be missing so it's just loose because the mortar failed now this is wind damage again looking probably at a second story here wind catches this roof coming off of this roof catches it here mortar patty based probably uh, concrete, flat tiles, missing tiles, ridge cap is missing, definitely wind damage there. Now this is definitely wind damage, no doubt, but what I wanna show you here is how was this tile applied? Uh, it was probably installed with foam. We don't see any batten, we don't see any fasteners, nail screws, but we see this streak here. So they probably put this on with foam. The foam dissolved, failed, and just pulled right off of the mott bed. Now this is a Donan engineering test. So what they did is they built this flat roof. They applied 120 mile an hour to it. It's a clay tile. It's applied with foam. They put 120 mile an hour wind on it. I'm not for sure how long, but you can begin to see that they begin to uh, lift at the eave. Now they begin to shuffle a little bit. Now they're becoming displaced and now they're flying off. So they're coming off. These tiles are popping up. They're pulling back. These tiles are taking more tile with them as the wind catches it. And now they're really flying off. They're probably impacting other pieces of the tile. Notice the ridge is not caught. But 
these tiles are all coming off. So we've got failure progress of a clay with foam tile roof system at 120 mile an hour. So that's that's why we would see you can see pieces of foam on those tiles right there. This is a Hurricane Irma roof. Now the wind is actually going to usually catch these eaves first, and it's just going to start peeling back these tiles. Uh, this is on the windward side and they're coming off and they're flying over onto the leeward side which is causing impact hits. You can see the impact hits here from these tiles lifting off here. We have also displacements. So you can see the weather lines. We can see the tiles slid down, slid off. This is a concrete tile. There's the nail hole, probably mortar padded. Uh, could they have been shuffled? Could they have been displaced? Uh, they are they've definitely slid down. Could this be repaired? Absolutely. See this all the time. Here's another displace where they've slid down. This tile slid, this tile slid. Uh, this one is starting to slide. Uh, is, are this, is this wind damage? Or, the, or there's, or is there uplift and they come loose? Or what has happened? Um, this can definitely be repaired. Again, we'd want to see the rest of the roof. We'd want to see the ridge, the corner zones. We'd want to see the eaves to determine the extent of the damage. Just like collateral damage, what else is going on? And here's a ridge cap. So the ridge cap's all, all in piece. And there's the mortar cap here. They've slid down. Um, most likely mortar, mortar applied. You can see it around the vent, more around the vent. So is this wind damage? Typically not. This is going to be uh, wear and tear. They've slid down, gravity's pulled them off because I don't see any ridge cap missing or displaced. Now they're loose but not displaced. So there is a deflection of about an inch here on the, on the, on the measuring. So this is, this, is, this is just a loose tile. It's not displaced. Uh, there's nothing going on here. There's no damage here that we would be responsible for. Here's another loose tile, but not displaced. They picked this up a little bit to show the mortar here, and you can see it never bonded to the tile. This is a flat concrete tile. There's your head lugs there. There's the water channel. Again, this should have been moistened wet when the mortar was applied so that it would adhere. The mortar would apply to the tile just like you would a tile floor. You're going to get PAs doing this all day long on you. So they get in the middle of the field tile and they'll start pulling up tiles. And you can see they've pulled this one up three, four, five inches. And they're saying, hey, this is wind damage. But see, I don't see any other displaced tiles here. So is this wind damage? Again, we'd have to look at the wind speed, the height of the roof, what are the zones, corner zones, field zones, ridge caps, eave caps, field tiles to determine if this is wind damage. But chances are this is not wind damage. These are just loose tiles. I don't even see them displaced. You know, they're not moved down. I don't see any weather lines up here. So these are just loose tiles because over years, this mortar patty has failed. It's just dried out. Expansion and contraction has loosened the, the mortar set. So now you've just got these loose tiles. Now these are impact hits and you can see some things hit these. What is it? Coconuts, lawn chairs, maybe other tiles. But you can see a crater, so they're too far apart for people to walk on. So you can see these craters, and they've just crushed the tile. Whatever hit it just crushed it. These are clay tiles, probably uh, a Venezuela tile because they're really thin. Here's another good crater, so you can just see that's an impact. And how many tiles are here? Well, these are S tiles, so you just are counting them. One two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, maybe fourteen tiles here in this in this break, uh, this impact. Here's another roof. So we pull up here, we've got a low profile roof, um, one story, looks like clay tiles, low profile tiles. We get up on the roof, and you can see this is probably maybe a 612. This is probably going to be the steepest roof you're going to walk on. 
Yankees, maybe even be 512. But anyway, there's nothing going on. No ridge gaps damaged. Nothing on the eaves. Everything looks pretty good. Looks good. No tiles are missing. We've got a chip here. It's probably from installation. No big deal. Now we've got something going on. Hmm, what is this? So we've got some tiles that look displaced. And this is a concrete tile. See the edge and see how thick it is? And look at the deflection here. So we've got a tile. We got water, you know, we got the weather line. And this is moved beyond the barrier of its limits. So these, this is called demarcation. Demarcation is when it's moved beyond the limits of its capacity. And it's, it's fastened with screws. It's probably moved over an inch, maybe two inches. So this is called demarcation. This is typically considered wind damage because they have moved that far, displaced. And then we we tabulate everything up. So we did have 142 mile an hour wind gust. It was mechanically fastened. You can see the fasteners. No lost, no lost tiles. So they didn't they didn't blow off, but there was clear demarcation weather pattern at the displaced tile. So again, it's moved out of place beyond its boundaries when lifted and shuffled the roof tile. So this would be considered wind damage because of the demarcation. It's moved beyond its boundaries. We can repair this roof. Now, <clears throat> why is it important to get the brand on the tile? because we can find these perhaps in a boneyard. So this is an old list that I used. Um, I would call them up, I've got this manufacturer. Do you have any tiles? Yes, how many? Okay, good, we can repair. This is not a good slide, but uh, I took this off of a Google search. This is current. These are discontinued tiles. You can see some of the manufacturer names here, Vanguard, uh, uh, Pioneer, there's a Life Tile, there's Monray, and a Monier, and a Superior. So all of these tiles have dis discontinued. Does a Boneyard have them? Maybe. Let's hope so. Uh, if so, we can repair. If not, then we're going to either replace the one of the slopes and harvest those and use them for repair on the other uh, slopes, or we may wind up very well replacing. Here's some fun facts. Uh, tile Roof span is about 60 years but the underlayment is only about 40 years why is that because the underlayment just dries out becomes brittle starts leaking uh, again the the aisle roof is not your water barrier it's the mod modified bitumen roof underneath is the water barrier the tiles protect the water barrier which is the which is the modified bit clay tiles are more more energy efficient than concrete tiles. Why? Because clay tiles don't transfer as much heat as a concrete tile. So they, therefore they're more energy effective. And there's about 87 roof tiles per the square. Give or take, you know, depends on the, on the manufacturer brand, the weight, but typically about 87 is a rule of thumb. You can put about 768 concrete plain tiles on a pallet versus 720 clay tiles on a pallet. Why? Clay tiles are more fragile, they can't stack as high on the pallet. The weight of a square, uh, there's about nine and a half to 12 pounds per square foot for concrete tiles. So roughly, you know, 100, 100 110 pounds per square versus let's say asphalt shingles, which are about three pounds per square foot 30 pounds a square. So it, there's a drastic difference in weight. So a tile roof frame, framing has to be really robust, really beefy to handle that weight. All right. So let's go to the next thing I want to show you here. And let's look at, uh, let's look at a file. This is actually a roof I did back in 2007. So we've got this one story tile roof. We get up there and go, back in the day we marked by direction. So yeah, today it's you know 
front slope, back slope, that type of thing. But back then it was by direction. I always put a mark by a crack. I'm thinking, let's just start selling right off, showing that this roof is cracked, right? So, <laughs> something I did. And we begin to show the cracks. So we've got, you know, a horizontal crack. We've got some cracking here per tile. Another horizontal crack. Another crack tile here. Lots of crack tiles. Vertical crack. Then we get into displaced cracks. So this one's displaced, this one's displaced, that one's displaced. So we can see that this shift, this tile's been shuffled somehow or another. And uh, we can see there's a nail hole. So this is probably a mortar set tile, concrete tile. Another crack and displaced. Another crack. And then I try to take some shots showing, you know, these rows. Do we see anything going on here? And they just kind of look a little funky in places, right? <clears throat> and here we go. So I, I find a tile that I can slide out and then I chalk the, the manufacturer so that we can see it, showing the motor patty. Get a nice close-up so everybody can read it. Why? Because this tile's discontinued. And here's the mortar set. And you can almost see the brand uh, stamped in the mortar when they when they put it in. So we got the 90 pound. Uh, looks like low row roofing on this roof. Then we go to the ridge. Any any ridge blown off, any any displacement on the eaves, that kind of thing. Look at the corner zones, see what kind of conditions they're in. More cracks. Always check around the, the, you know, the vents, the boots, see if there's anything going on there. Checking to see if there's anything going on in the eaves. Some cracks, looks like some fresh cracks. Again, we've got demarcation. We've got tiles that are moved beyond the boundaries of their limits, showing the mortar base. More cracks at the bottom, more cracks over here. So, you know, they're, they're in close proximity. So it's telling me that this section of roof could have moved. Cracking here. Looks like there might be some old repair here, might be some caulking in there, not sure. There's some, looks like some caulking. So, you know, again, my investigation, did you make any repairs? Did you do any temporary repairs? Did you? Do you have an invoice for that? Who did that? When did they do that? More cracks. Now we've got some vertical cracks going across several tiles here. So that makes me believe that, you know, this is more than, this is foot traffic. You get a big chip out of here. So this could have been disheveled. Crack here. Main thing here is I've got a discontinued tile and I'm showing them all of these cracked tiles. And here we come to this, and then we got this, a different color of tile. So my question is, you know, is this a repair? When was the repair made? Was it recently or was it 15 years ago? Is this tile actually, con, you know, interlocking with this? Or is it just a close match tile to mitigate the damage? Or is this actually interlocking? I see this one's out of place. Um, and if the repair was recently, where did you buy the tiles? Who did this repair? When was it done? A lot of questions about this. More cracks. Cracks. Cracks around the vents. Looking at the field tiles. Anything displaced? Anything moving around? You know, I just want to look at all of this. There's no ridge cap missing. I've got some loose tiles here. Uh, they're out of place. No ridge cap damage. But we may have some ridge cap repair because here's some caulking. And you can see that valley cut there where they stuff the mortar in the valley, right? So that's pretty common there. Caulking around this piece, and this looks fairly recent. More cracks. Looks like some caulking around that, that ridge cap. And then we get into the flat roof. Okay, so let me show you one other thing here that's, I think, 
notable. When you're out on the roof and you pull that shingle, uh, that tile out rather, what what's a good idea is when you get there, measure that up. You know, measure the profile of that tile, the width, the length. Make sure you get all the good measurements on it because even though you may have a discontinued tile, there may be another manufacturer has something that's close to it, not in appearance, but in size and the interlocking system. That's the important part. So we're not talking about the same color, uh, but we're talking about an interlock system. So just a way to measure that up, make sure you get everything measured up on that. So once I did this, um, let me show you the the narrative basically that I did. And again, this is uh, this is several years ago, and the narratives were, were written a little differently. But the but the idea is the same. So we always took a, a, an approach back then of the investigation, who you met with, and then what did what were you what did you find? The tile roof is a wall. Wallen Spanish S tile that is over 20 years old. The roof has wind damage to all slopes. The insured has attempted to patch in some of the damaged tiles to mitigate the loss. The roof tile measure 18 and a half by 10 inches. Photos of measurements on file. Um, and then we talk a little bit about the wind damage. You know, this would be like collateral wind damage to the home, front doors, and different things like that the interior damage from the water intrusion, the fences were damaged. So we're noticing that there's collateral damage to this roof, right? And then the roof itself, as per visual inspection, uh, based on the above cause and origin, it was noted that the tile roof is warranted, is warranted for replacement for four reasons. So this is how I wrote it. The tile has been discontinued. That's that's my money statement. Documentation is on file. Cannot be repaired. Wind damage chart shows the roof is more economical to replace than repair. We were actually doing comparative estimates. You know, if I had, you know, uh, 150 tiles, you know, is it above 25% in Florida, you know, damaged or not. So we were doing these comparatives. Third reason was tiles are applied with a mortar patty application. This, this does not meet the local building codes and will require to be replaced. So we had a code issue there. And then judging by the interior water damage to the ceiling, the roof membrane has been compromised and will require to be replaced. So I've got all this interior water damage from this roof leaking shows me that, you know, even if we're not going to replace the roof, we got to take the tile up to replace the under underlayment, uh, the, you know, the modified bit roof to repair the roof. So I was building a case and that's the key, you know, build a case for your for your roof replacements, not just say you got a lot of tiles damaged. Now, just one other thing here, and I thought this might be helpful for you to look at. Um, let me get to, yes, right here. So just to, again, this is, is an old file and protocols per client might be different, but this is how I wrote the roof. Replaced concrete S tiles. I always use a lot of F9 notes. Uh, removed it, replaced it. Uh, again, F9 notes, 30 pound felt, roofing nails, installation. I, re I applied a 90 pound roll roofing with a nail down on this so that's your that's your underlayment and your bitumen if you will we were using a roll 90 pound roll roofing 30 pound felt 90 pound roll roofing we re-nailed it because of a florida code at that point f9 note again then we use a ridge cap uh f9 note drip drip edge gutter valley metal flashings exhaust pipes roof vents we used a dumpster for the 90 pound uh, felt at that point. We were allowed to do that at that point. And we were also allowed to use tax and insurance permits. We were given, uh, I think it was a 2% of the total roof costs for taxes and insurance. Again, that was just what we were allowed to do back then. You have checked current protocols now. So again, you know, what we're, what we're talking about is, um, you know, assessing these roofs where you're really looking at the total pictures, not just a, uh, you know, a tile 
or whatever, but you're looking at the entire thing, make sure you get the ID, ID number, ID manufacturer off of the tile. That's important. Measure that tile and then build the case. Are, are we seeing just, you know, cracked tiles? Why are they cracked? Is it wear and tear? Is it is it, are they displaced? Is there demarcation? What type of a tile is it? Clay tile? How thick is it? What's the measurement? Uh, make sure you're not assessing those cor right bottom corner crack on a concrete flat tile. Those are not wind damage. And build your case with that. So hopefully you got a lot of good information out of this uh, today. Hopefully you can use it down the road. Uh, good luck on tile roofs. You need any help? Let us know. Thank you for working for Whirly. We appreciate it. Have a great day. We'll see you on the next video.